Hi everyone, my name is Natalie. Today I wanted to do a quick video, uh, or at least this part is going to be quick hopefully, uh, in talking about the book fair. So the in, um, in Gothenburg, uh, which is one of the largest towns in Sweden, there is an, an annual uh, book fair going on, um, and I think it is the, the largest of its kind for Scandinavia at least. Um, and a lot of interesting authors and writers come there to have uh, seminaries and talks and everything. Also a lot of publishers come there and um, basically it's just a, a large group of people collected uh, in a fairly small space so uh, it is quite um, it's quite bustling and um, a lot of fun as a reader to see so many uh, book enthusiasts. Uh, so I went today and uh, it was so fun. Uh, I wanted to share a few clips of uh, the book fair with you and specifically to show you uh, the two uh, talks that I went to listen to specifically. So Siri Hustved talked about her new book, Memo Memories of the Future, I think it is called. I will insert a photo here. Uh, I haven't read it yet, um, but I'm planning to order it now. Uh, I have been meaning to get to it and I, I wanted to buy it at the book fair, but I couldn't find it in uh, in the the many, many um, booths that were, uh, that were uh, there. Uh, it is a, um, a story about a, a, a young woman who moves to New York, I think, uh, and tries to make it as a writer. But she talks about uh, this uh, this book as being quite humorous. The talk uh, was in part about uh, her book and the themes in it, and also she talked about um, American politics and current topics, uh, about her writing process in general and her interests. And uh, it was a, it was such a fun time. Uh, I think she's such an intelligent um, speaker. Uh, so I really enjoyed hearing her point of view and I was so excited to see her um, because Siri Husted is an author that I really really admire. And then I also went to a talk with Han Kang, uh, which is the author of course of The White Book and of Human Acts and um, of The Vegetarian, which is probably the most well-known, but she specifically talked about uh, The White Book because it recently came out in the Swedish translation. The translator uh, was there to um, to translate uh, what she was saying about the process of writing the white book and what it meant to her um, and again a really interesting talk and I really loved hearing her talk in Korean. Um, I tried to to follow along at least a little bit of the Korean. I, I have uh, watched a lot of Korean t television uh, so I did recognize a few words but I obviously was not able to, to completely understand what she was saying uh, without the translator. Uh, but she read parts of the white book out and that was also really beautiful to hear it in the original language. I will definitely put in some clips from that so you can uh, also see a little bit of um, the wonderful uh, talks that I that I heard today. Uh, but uh, other than that, I also wanted to show you the books that I bought today because, of course, with the book fair and a lot of sellers there, uh, publishers and everything, uh, I ended up buying a few books. So, <clears throat> the first one I bought, uh, I think, is probably the one that I was most excited for, um, and it is uh, a go to Kristoff's. This is a novella of hers, um, which is called um, the... I'm not sure the, the English would be an alphabet. But Christoph, who wrote the the notebook and uh, the whole trilogy, the Twins trilogy or the Book of Lies trilogy, that I've talked about on my channel several times because it was one of my favorite books uh, a couple of years ago, I think two years ago. There's not a lot of her books that have been translated, so I was so excited to see that this existed. So I really hope that this is a, a new trend or that they have decided to take on more of her works. Um, but I'm probably going to be diving into this quite soon. I got two uh, Swedish books, and first we have Bummelsengen, Bummelsengen uh, by Susanna Alakoski. This is an author who has won the August Prize uh, a couple of years ago as well. And this particular book is a historical fiction novel set in the 19th century following the experience of 
Finnish and Swedish women working in, uh, I think, textile uh, textile factories. Everything about that sounded interesting to me. I am really interested in sort of crafts history, uh, but I'm also trying to read more on women's history and uh, I find it very interesting to read uh, of, of women's history of more local, uh, of the more local kind. Uh, so I had seen this around uh, recently before I saw it in the book fair and decided to, to pick it up. And I also got this historical fiction novel for days, give me a bara var it's mycket by Eleanor Skagegård, uh, and this is uh, a fictionalized account of the Mendelssohn family. Uh, so it's all about music, and again, it is a theme that I'm interested in. So I think that was the main main thing that drew me to this. Follows the Fanny and Fe Felix, um, who are musicians, and about the prejudice that they or the the anti-Semitism that they face um, in growing up. Uh, so yeah, I'm so excited to to read this, and also the um, the bookseller uh, when I bought this I was so excited about this book. So that is also a really good sign for me, anyways. And then uh, there was a lot of secondhand and antiquarian booksellers there, and I found a few that sounded really interesting to me. As uh, so we have the female wits, women playwrights of the restoration by Fidelis Morgan. Uh, it says six dazzling and sophisticated restoration plays rescued here from th three centuries of obscurity are prefaced by a lucid and witty accounts of the dramatists' lives and theater of the time. The whole offering an entirely new perspective on a brilliant and fascinating age. So I don't really know anything else about it, but again, as I said, I am interested in, in reading more on women's history and sort of forgotten women in the um, in the ages. Uh, so that that obviously fits with that. Speaking of women and sort of feminists, we have uh, the life and death of Mary Wollstonecraft by Claire Tomalin. Tomalin, uh, and this is a biography of Mary Wollstonecraft, who was the mother of Mary Shelley, uh, and herself a feminist writer, uh, specifically writing a vindication of uh, women's rights, I think it is called, uh, which I have not read yet. Uh, but this is uh, a bi biography that I've seen around before because I read a book called Romantic Outlaws, which I often recommend as, um, which is a biography of both Mary Wollstonecraft and Mary Shelley. And after reading Romantic Outlaws and really enjoying it, uh, I wanted to pick up more biographies on both women. Uh, so I decided to pick this up uh, to, to continue on. Obviously it's, it's quite a short one, um, but it's gonna be interesting to see how it differs in her portrayal of Mary Wollstonecraft. The next one I have is written by the same author, and it is A Jane Austen, A Life, uh, again by Claire Tmallon. Uh, and this is obviously a biography of Jane Austen, and I th I am closing in on finishing Jane Austen's body of work. Uh, this summer was Jane Austen July again, and I read Mansfield Park then, uh, which I really enjoyed. And um, I think the only big uh, novel of hers that I've yet to read is Persuasion. There's a lot of other smaller things that I haven't read by her, but I think the only of the of the novels that I have left is Persuasion anyway. So I thought it was a perfect timing to find this book uh, since uh, I am planning to, to get to Persuasion quite soon and then I could pick this up right along that time uh, to get more of a context to her work and especially in uh, rereading her work and having more knowledge about the author's uh, own life experiences. The next one is more of a random one but it, it, it just fits with uh, the sort of the, the timing and it is called The Industrial Revolution of the 18th Century in England um, with this, this um, edition. Basically my, my thought with this book was that um, it would be interesting to read this alongside Victober or some sometime soon uh, to see sort of the way that Victor uh, the, the Victorian era was shaped by um, the Industrial Revolution and the times right before uh, the Victorian era started. Uh, so I just thought that it would be an interesting historical context to have, uh, but also just thought it sounded like a charming book, uh, so I decided to, to pick it up. 
And then the last book that I bought was Sea Room, An Island Life by Adam Nicholson. So I feel like I've heard someone talk about this book on booktube, uh, but it is written by the author of uh, The Seabird's Cry, uh, which won the uh, Wainwright Prize last year and that I loved. Mainly I just picked this up because it's natural it's a uh, sort of nature writing and it's by an author whose previous work I've enjoyed uh, so I thought that I would pick it up as well. So those are the books that I have bought during the book fair today and I will show you as I said a few clips. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you read any of these books that I've talked about um, and I will, I will talk to you soon. Bye! <laughs> Det er så 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 so I wanted to in a way lend my life or my sensibilities to my sister and to imagine uh, my sister being in the city in my place. That's why I dedicated the second part of the book to my sister so that I can actually think about why things are seen through the eyes of my sister and the world and the vividness of the world are sensed by my sister as well. <laughs> So when I wrote Human Acts, I felt myself um, transformed after I had written the book. So I started with human violence and I felt as if I was crawling on my belly towards something bright within human nature. 그리고 이 소설을 쓸 때에는 정말로 우리 안에 어, 무엇으로도 죽일 수 없고 다치게 할수 없고 파괴할 수 없는 것이 존재한다는 것을 믿고 싶었어요. And when I was writing this book, I wanted to believe there is something within us that cannot be hurt, um, destroyed, or um, completely annihilated. 그리고 어떤 고통도 그것을 어, 어, 죽이거나 and I don't think any pain can kill or destroy that um, there's something within us. So it was with that in my heart, in my mind, that I wanted to give my sister white things. The present of the novel, the present of writing, was the present of my writing the novel. So that span from 2016 uh, beyond the moment of the inauguration 
Uh, and so that present comes up in the book. It is also related to what I think of as the great man theme. The idea that it's not so much what the great man says as the degree to which the crowd feels his authority and importance. In you know, the agreement between the reader and the writer in that case is that the writer is using the techniques of the novel, which means you're endlessly filling in details that you can't possibly remember. This book really is about the workings of memories. In the library, time is simultaneous. You know, as the narrator says, you can read Plato's Apology and put it right next to Elsa von Freytag Lohenhoven's poems, and the time vanishes. It's like time and physics. You know, you can go back and forth without interruption.